Hello everyone, and today is going to be the first video of a new series in support specifics. This is a series where I dive into the details and share some one percents that separate the good from the great. This video is going to be all about minute one and level one. Now we've all seen insane jungle clear timers, you know, two minutes 45, insane new clear speed on this champion, but now it's support's turn. We're going to have insane quest item completion timings, and leashing timings. So this video is going to cover support income items, quest completion timings, um, leashing, how to optimize leashing, and how to optimize basing as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start by talking about the starting support items and comparing and contrasting them. So the fastest possible upgrade, assuming no level one shenanigans for spell thieves and uh, spectral sickle is around five minutes and five seconds. For the Relic Shield and the Steel Shoulder Guards, if you just proc on um, all of the cannons and the rest on the melee minions for maximal gold generation, the completion time is around 8 minutes before you get your wards. So we can already tell that there is a faster completion time for the Spell Thieves and the Spectral Sickle. Let's fully dive into the, the pros and the cons of each of these um, support items. So for the Relic Shield line, so Relic Shield, Steel Shoulder Guards, the pros is that they provide wave control, which is really important early in the game. And they have a special synergy with uh, Dematerializer, where you can just one-shot a cannon, um, which uh, provides a lot of tempo and shove for your lane. This is especially valuable um, in the early lane, where you can use your uh, relic procs on the second wave melee minions to get level 2 first, to then uh, look for an all-in or just control the lane from there. Another pro is that the Relic Shield line, they provide you with more tankiness. So this is strong versus engage, and where you really have to survive, and that HP pool is really important. It also provides you with guaranteed income. You're always going to have access to the minion wave. If you're in a hard losing matchup, you will be able to find windows to proc your Relic Shield under tower. In easier matchups, you'll always be able to find opportunities proc whichever minions you want. So this is just useful in always generating an income. Okay, the cons of the Relic Shield line, it is a slower upgrade. So while you do have a guaranteed income, the income is not as high as uh, the Spell Thieves line if they are procced regularly. And you also get outscaled with the Relic Shield line, typically. Um, this is for the uh, enchanters or more of the champions who are choosing between the Relic Shield and the Spell Thieves and they're not an established frontliner, their core identity is not built around having HP and HP regen, the Relic Shield line is going to be outscaled. HP regen scales worse than mana regen. If you are uh, an enchanter or playmaker type champion who wants to look for um, utility and uptime of abilities. So let's say you're playing like Lulu or Zillion who have pretty rough laning phases and you're really trying to survive and you really want to have some income. It's too dangerous to go Spell Thieves to try and proc it on like a Samira and a Nort who are just gonna kill you. So you opt in for the Relic Shield, you get your money, um, but the HP and the HP regen on your champion is not going to scale into the mid to late game. Your champion is not designed to be taking damage in the mid to late, they just want to have AP or mana regen to uh, have as much utility as possible. So just keep that in mind. But for, uh, for tanky champions, if you're playing engagers, Relic Shields is great for you there. All right, so now let's talk about the Spell Thieves line. The pros is that they have faster upgrades. So if you proc them regularly, then you're gonna achieve a much faster uh, quest completion, or almost three minutes if you proc it perfectly. So it has a faster upgrade. It scales better on champions that want to uh, have more utility and are not uh, tanks and engagers. And it also has more sustain. So the Relic Shield makes you yourself tankier, but the Spell Thieves and the Spectral Sickle, they can potentially help to keep your ADC or yourself topped up, which could be good versus poke, or it could be ver good versus all-in lanes where the all-in is happening on your ADC instead of yourself. The cons for the Spell Thieves line, it can be hard to proc in hard matchups, and this is the main drawback. 
if everyone um, could always proc their spell thieves or their spectral sickle, they would just always go it and get really fast quest completion times. But it's very matchup oriented if you can go for these trades to proc your item. The other main con is that you don't have that wave, uh, that wave control that the relic shield line provides. So contesting level two is a lot harder. They just get to kill two melees for free and you have to deal with that um, loss of tempo. So with that being said, engagers, they should always choose the relic shield line. Um, that's just part of their identity. They want to be tanky and their identity is a lot about tempo and pressure, ganking and roaming which the, um, the Relic Shield line fits in perfectly with. The Enchanters, they need to make a decision between the items. Um, this is especially important in rough matchups. Uh, like I said, the Zully and the Lulu. Um, you can even lump Bard in with Enchanters just for the purpose of this argument. But sometimes it's not easy to proc your spell thieves and you need Relic to survive early, um, but uh, the trade-off is that you scale worse with that item. So the takeaway point for this segment is you should know that uh, there is a trade-off between Spell Thieves and between Relic Shield. Relic Shield provides guaranteed income, and the Spell Thieves line um, provides a faster income if you are able to use it regularly. And then Relic Shield scales worse, um, but is better on tanks. Okay, now we're going to have a look at base timings. The latest that you can base and control midbush and move in time with the wave on the first wave is 52 seconds. Now, we're gonna have a look at that happen. So this was me in a practice tool. And I'm gonna channel my base right before 52 seconds. Because there is a slight 0.5 second channel time for your base to come through. But around 52 seconds, we're gonna base and we're gonna instantly input our movement command from base. Um, we're not going to buy items and then move. We're going to instantly move and then buy items while we're leaving the fountain. And you can see we're moving with the minion wave here. And we get to this mid bush in time with the wave. So the latest you can base without leashing, 52 seconds. Okay. And this doesn't have to be um, when I'm warding this bush and basing. I'm going to wait until it's two minutes here and then reset the clock. So this is practically zero, zero, just the game won't update that. And I can just show you from another perspective. So you could be invading top side and then um, you base at 52, base at 52 and input command and then swap to sweeper or buy your items or whatever. Same thing. Okay. So now, what about if you leash? Well, this is actually a little bit different. So if you leash, the latest you can base is 57. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Reset the game at four minutes, treat it like it's zero minutes. And then at 57, I'm gonna base and you'll be able to leash in time there. So I could be anywhere, but right now, I'm here and I'm basing, could be invading here, basing, could be invading here, basing, whatever. And we base, we input the movement command immediately out of the fountain. And yeah, we're going to be here in time. The red spawns now. And we leash. And this can just cut out a, a, trim, a lot of fat from your movement and positioning uh, before minions spawn. I know that you guys will think of a lot of times where you're just hanging around doing nothing, right? You're just standing here, you're AFK, you're just twiddling your thumbs, whatever. But if you're invading, you can base at 57, then you can be around here for the longest time possible so that you can potentially uh, kill someone for as long as possible. Or um, yeah, if you, if you want to ward this, you can have this ward uh, be alive in the lane for as long as possible if you base and then ward um, and you'll be, get back here in time to leash. I do want to say that the terrain for blue and red side, although it's slightly different, the time to walk to lane between blue and red side is the same. The time to walk from um, blue buff on red side to lane is the same time as 
from uh, red buff on blue side to lane. So this works both ways. And the last disclaimer is that I did this on Brawn, I think 340 base move speed. I didn't account for runes like Time Warp Tonic or Relentless Hunter or Celerity that you might have. So as long as you do base at these times, then you will be there in time. In some situations, um, you might be there even quicker, depending on your champ item setup, all of that. Let's talk about leashing on blue side versus on red side. Um, so leashing on blue side is a little bit harder. You don't necessarily have a great place to kite this camp to the next buff. If your jungler wants to do Krugs after red, kiting down here is a little bit of an awkward trip for you to get to bot. Um, if he wants to do chickens or move to top side, obviously you don't want to kite the buff this way and then you're super far from bot. Whereas if you're leashing on red side, you can easily kite the blue buff this way, then you can get to lane and your jungler can do gromp. Um, so there's going to be a few differences in the timings that I'm going to talk about for leashing for both sides. So let's say you're leashing on blue side and you want to give as good of a leash as possible without losing any experience bot. Let's say you're in a rough bot lane matchup. You don't expect you're able to get prio. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to leash the red buff. You're going to pull it into the bush over here so that you can leash the most amount possible um, while your bot lane can move bot. And that's a good compromise for your jungler. So what you're going to do is you're going to auto eight times. One, two, cut the buff down. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you're going to sprint bot. And now you've given the biggest leash possible and you're going to be able to get all the XP here. And this is what you're going to do um, if you want to give the biggest leash possible in a losing matchup. Let's say you're in a really scary bot matchup and you're even scared of moving through the tri bush. Maybe you're going to get cheesed there. What you're going to do now is you're going to leash red to the same spot in the bush here. And then you're going to go the long way still get XP. Now you can only do six auto attacks. And this is going to be the same for pretty much all melee supports. They're going to have very similar attack speeds. Two, three, four, five, and six. Run this way. Run straight here now. and you will be able to get all the XP here. The last couple scenarios I'm going to run through is when we're going to give the biggest leash possible while not sacrificing any bot's priority. So what we're going to do here, exact same thing, leash red down to this bush, and we're going to do six autos. If we're going the short way, four autos if we're going the long way. I'll just show you the six autos short way quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you ask your team to just leash the, the buff into the bush there. And now you can get here with a little bit more time to spare. And you can potentially enter the mid bush before all the melees die. And then you can actually pressure mid bush and look to thread in level two. So let's have a quick look at that again, but now going the long way. So this would be quite a unique situation where you're scared of tri bush, but you still want to contest for level two. So this is going to be even harder to kite the camp down to the bush in time. You're only going to auto four times. You want to use your spell between your orders just to maximize your leash damage. So let's just have a look at what that's going to look like. Okay, we ordered four times. We're going to run straight bot here. We're not going to uh, enter the tri bush. And now we've entered lane and we can enter mid bush before all the melees die. So let's have a quick look at red side now. We're going to leash blue through this way and meet up through bot here. 
So we'll go through the scenario where we don't want to contest prior and we're just getting into XP range. We are going to auto attack nine times. So this is, as I said, a little bit easier to leash uh, than blue sides. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine autos, run bot, get the XP, concede prior. Um, yep, and we'll always get the XP here. This one was a little bit closer than usual, but I've tested this enough times. So nine attacks if you want to concede prior and get XP. And that will account for the minion RNG. So now let's have a look if you want to contest the, uh, the prior. You want to get into the mid bush before all the melees die. We're going to do seven auto attacks in this situation. Once again, cutting the blue buff towards this channel. This channel is actually faster than this channel if you want to get to bot lane. Two, three, four, five, six. And we're just doing seven this time. Run bot, get mid bush before melees die. And here we are. So the last couple points I'm going to mention here is that if you are leashing on red side, you don't have to be scared of potentially parving through try. You can always leash this way. You should very rarely ever look to pull the buff this way and then move this way. Maybe you're expecting them, maybe you have a warden try and you see them start to come this way and you want to meet them here. But again, that's very unlikely. Leash the buff this way, through this channel, ping your jungler, ping your ADC, and either do 9 or 7 auto attacks at least, considering um, what you want to do with the first wave of prior. And the last, last thing is, I'm not going to do this for every single champion with different base attack speeds, or attack ranges, or base move speeds. This is just um, a rough guide and a bit of a bare minimum. If your champion has more range than Braum, then maybe you can weave in uh, one or two more auto attacks. If you have more move speed in your runes or base move speed, maybe you can get another auto attack in. Um, this is just kind of to, to set the standard for this discussion. Thanks for watching. I hope that your level one and minute one now is going to be more efficient and more optimized. And as usual, feel free to join my School of Support Discord server. Uh, the link is going to be down below for coaching or support resources or for chatting with like-minded individuals such as yourselves. Thanks again. Bye.